Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Charles Boyer and Haiti Lamar in Algiers. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. On the south shore of the Mediterranean sprawls the old strange city of Algiers, gateway to Africa and crossroads of the world. For a thousand years, it's been the home port of drama and adventure, a haven for hunted men, with mystery in every winding street and danger in every doorway. I can't think of a more intriguing locale for a play with Charles Boyer and Hedy Lamar. A French detective named Ashelby picked this setting when he turned his man-hunting mind to the printed page. He called his story Pepe Lamoco. That was the title of the French motion picture, too, but Walter Wanger called his American version Algiers and gave the part of Pepe Lamoco to Charles Boyer, who revives it for us tonight, with Hedy Lamar playing her original role of Gabrielle, and it's her first appearance at any microphone. We've never received more requests for a play than this one, and lately, with the picture Pepe Lamoco being generally released in this country, and Algiers playing many cities all over again, you've requested it under both names. Algiers is the drama of a man doomed to spend the rest of his days in a relentless battle against the law. Danger was his breath of life, and love the kiss of death. No man alive could call Pepe Lamoco afraid. I think the best way to tell you how we feel about tonight's cast and play is to quote two young girls whom I found in front of the theater marquee today. One said to the other, Look, Lux has Charles Boyer and Hedy Lamar tonight. Oh boy, is that going to be a swell show. I hope they'll forgive my eavesdropping and accept my gratitude, because they put the whole idea of this theater in a few words. It is Lux Flakes that makes a production like this with stars like these possible, and your support of both our theater and product keeps things humming on this side of the footlights. You took our word for it that Lux Flakes was worth a fair trial, and we have your word for it that it came through with flying colors. From coast to coast now, the house lights go down, and the curtain goes up on Algiers, starring Charles Boyer as Pepe Lamoco, Hedy Lamar as Gabby, and Alan Napier as Inspector Slimane. Algiers, where the blazing desert meets the blue Mediterranean, and modern Europe jostles ancient Africa. A stone's throw from the modern city, the native quarter, known as the Kasbah, stands like a fortress above the sea. Here mingle the people of many tribes and races, drifters and outcasts from all parts of the world, and criminals seeking refuge from the law. Supreme on these heights rules one man, Pepe Lamoco, long wanted by the police. Far below the Kasbah at police headquarters, the new commissioner demands his capture. I'm not interested in hearing excuses about local conditions, Inspector. Here's a criminal whose exploits have made him notorious throughout Europe. And for two years, he's been living here in Algiers within a stone's throw of your headquarters. As you say, Commissioner. I'm here to settle this, and I want it done quickly. Commissioner, you have only just arrived in Algiers. You are not familiar with the Casbah. Casbah? What's that? Some kind of nut? A very hard nut to crack. You see... Pepe Lomoko lives in the Casbah. Well, why not go in and take him out of it? You cannot arrest a king in his own palace, and Pepe is well guarded. Let me show you this map, Commissioner. Ah, this is fantastic. As a civilized man, you do not like fantasy. As a police officer, I don't believe in Yet it. Yet here it exists. Now, this is the native quarter known as the Casbah. As you look at it here, it is just a few lines on the map. But the reality is something stranger than anything you could have dreamed. It is only a step from the modern city to the Casbah, but when you take that step, you enter another world, a melting pot for all the sins of Earth. A jungle of houses, a labyrinth of narrow passages and winding alleys, rotten with vermin and decay and the filth of centuries. No one knows what mysteries are hidden behind those walls. No one knows what crimes and hopes are buried in those secret courtyards. 
40,000 inhabitants from all over the world live there. Kabyles in their white robes, Chinese faithful to Confucius, gypsies with their fortune telling and their songs, Negroes from every corner of Africa, and women. Oh, women of every age and color, women caught in the net of the Kasbah. Everywhere there are terraces, all connected together so that those who are accepted can move to any part of the Kasbah without even using the street. It is like a fortress rising from the sea, colorful, sordid, dangerous. There is not just one Kasbah, there are a hundred, a thousand. And in that labyrinth, Pepe Lomoko is at home. And he is safe as long as he stays there. Mm -hmm. How, how does this Pepe Lomoko conceal himself? Disguise, no doubt. You do not know Pepe, Commissioner. He'd laugh at disguise. Then why don't you find him, Inspector? Ah, but that is singularly easy. I see him every day. You see him? But of course. Then why, Inspector Slamane, has there been no effort to make an arrest? To arrest him in the Casbah would be simple. To get him out, impossible. So you do nothing? I flatter myself that I do a great deal in my humble way. I learn about Pepe. I know his habits. I study his weaknesses. When one cannot use guns, one must work with brains. I prefer guns. Inspector, we're going into the Casbah tonight. I'll need 12 men fully armed and ready for work. And you might prepare a special cell for Pepe Lamoco. As you wish, monsieur. <laughs> The police are coming! Police! <laughs> Question is, find out where he is. You there. Where is Pepe Lomoko? Anna, Mabafu, Mabafu. What's he say, Inspector? He does not know him. Sergeant, I see Regis over there. Bring him to me. Who's this Regis? Oh, a very old friend of ours, an informer. No, no, no let me go. I don't know anything. I haven't done anything. Come here, my let friend. Me go. Where is Pepe Lomoko? I don't know. By the sword of the great prophet, I haven't set eyes on him for two weeks. For two weeks, I haven't seen his face. Where is he, Regis? Where is Pepe? At Grandpa's. I don't know anything. I haven't seen him. Let him go, Sergeant. Let me alone. I don't know anything. Now, what did he say? He said that Pepe Lomoko is at Grandpa's. Grandpa? Who's he? A receiver of stolen goods. And you know where his place is? We know it. Then all the men to surround him at once. As you say, Commissioner. Look at this pearl, a remarkable specimen. You know, you and I have the same feeling for beauty, Pepe. Yes, this pearl belongs on a very special kind of ear, like a pink shell with a little curl of gold hair, a special kind of gold. I can just see it. Pepe, let's get down to business. We want to sell the stuff, not talk about it. Be quiet, Carlos. Carlos is definitely uncouth. Compare, you took the words out of my mouth. He's trying to cheat us, Pepe. All this talk is so he can get a better price, so he can make fools of us. Yes, so easy to make a fool of me. Why don't you try it sometime? Well, uh, Gampe has dealt with us for two years. We must have confidence in each other. That's the way to get along, eh, Gampe? Uh, that's the truth, Pepe. You know, this was once my trade. I began life in a jewelry store. And when you left, <laughs> you took the store with you. <laughs> yes, it became a habit. You know, I dream about settling down sometime, away from the Casbah, in a great city where people understand the things of beauty. I'd make a collection of jewels like this. Uh, just for myself, for people to see in glass cases. With Max here in a uniform to take care of them. Okay. And me, Pepe? You, Piero? You, my young friend, you would have a uniform like a general and be in charge of everything. Oh, I'd like that if you were there too. I want to stick with you, Pepe. Ah, Piero, I have great hopes for you someday. The signal. Get that stuff off the table. Leave it alone, Carlos. Who is it? It's Ines. Quick. Ines, open the door. Come in, Ines. Pepe, the police, they're coming. Police? Yo, look out the window. How do you know it's the police? I saw them. They're coming across the terrace, down in the street, everywhere. They're surrounding the house. Well, that's funny. How did they know I was here? Here they come, Pepe. Piero, give me the gun. When will you learn to obey orders? Pepe, I only thought that... There, you see? That was too close. Don't take so many chances, Piero. I don't want a bullet to come between us. The way that one almost did. Pepe, they're at the door downstairs. Now they'll break it again. Oh, every few weeks I have to get new doors. Uh, you'd better go, Pepe. Go on, quick. Cross the roof. Ines, you come with me. I want to speak to you. The rest of you, out the back way. I'll see you later. 
i Sveriges. Ines, hmm? did you tell anyone where I was? No one, Pepe. You're sure? Try to remember. Why don't you believe me, Pepe? All I want is to please you. I could not lie to you. Don't you? What about all that time you kept telling me that you didn't like me? But this is serious. Ah, so love is not serious. Pepe, it's serious if someone told the police. I didn't talk to anyone. I stayed at home until Regis came. Who came? Regis. Oh, Regis. My old and trusted friend. As soon as he told me, I ran to you. What did Regis tell you? About the police. He wanted me to warn you. Well, that was nice of him, wasn't it? And that's what I thought. <laughs> yes. Is that all you thought? Was there anything else for me to think? <laughs> That's what I like about you, Ines. You're such a child. Uh, I, I don't understand you, Pepe. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, hold out your hand. I have something very beautiful. Oh, See? A ring? Oh, Pepe! No, no, no. Don't grab. It's unlucky. You want to give it to me, Pepe? No, it's for some fat old woman. Oh, let me have it, Pepe. Sometime I'll get fat. <laughs> but you would lose it before that. Oh, no, no. I'll keep it for a charm. Then you must keep your fingers crossed. All right. So, there. See? Oh, this ring will mean that I'm always yours, Pepe. With my fingers crossed. Pepe, they've seen you. There he is! Keep down, Ines. Pepe, run, they'll catch you. Ah, don't worry. You get back to Grand Pays. I'll meet you in the morning. Pepe, be careful! Be careful! There he goes! Across the roof! Get after him! It is useless, monsieur. Keep firing! Don't let him out of your sight! Monsieur, will you help me, please? Madame, get off the street. I'm afraid I don't know which way to go. In this doorway, here, quickly. Thank you, monsieur. Not at all. But might I suggest that the Casbah is not a safe place to visit in the evening, particularly when one is wearing jewels such as yours. But you see, I, I wasn't alone. I came with some friends, and we became separated when those men began to shoot. Good evening. Make yourself comfortable, please. Something to drink? No, thank you. Evening, Aisha. We will just wait in here for a moment, if you do not mind. Make yourself comfortable, monsieur. What is this all about? What's happening out there? Oh, it's nothing, madame. You know how the police are. They like to keep everything in an uproar. A very profound observation. You see, madame, they are after a certain Pepe Lomoco, a jewel thief. They've been trying to catch him for two years. Two years? <laughs> the police must be rather stupid. As one of them, I consider that a triumph of understatement. You are one of them? I have that doubtful honor. Inspector Slimane is my name. And this Pepe Lamoco, how does he manage to keep out of your way so successfully? Oh, he is clever. A good head. It's not his head that saves him, it's his heart. A man with such a good heart could get around anyone. Mm, he sounds very intriguing, your Pepe Lamoco. That is a matter of taste, madame. Good evening, Aisha. Pepe, don't come in here. Well... Well, Inspector Slimane. And how are you, Pepe? Pepe, then this is... Pepe Lomoco. We were just talking of you, my friend. Oh, good evening, mademoiselle. Good evening. <gasps> Why, your arm is bleeding. You're hurt. Oh, it's nothing. A flea bite. One of the inspector's bullets cuts me. Well, this is a very pleasant surprise, mademoiselle. I often see the inspector, but never in such charming company. Are you looking at the lady's uh, jewels, Pepe? <laughs> no, I'm looking at the lady, Inspector. You've never been to the Casbah before, Mademoiselle, have you? No. I, I'm i just passing through Algiers with my friends. Oh, you will come again. There is something about the Casbah. Once you've been here, you can't stay away. Really? Perhaps you're right. Well, Inspector, why aren't you out chasing the fox? Oh, it's such a silly business. I prefer to use my brains. You know, your friends did a little better than usual tonight. At least they found me. That's pretty good for them. Shall we say, a step in the right direction. <laughs> Excuse us, mademoiselle, if we talk shop. Uh, cigarette. Please. They thought I was at Grand Pairs. Poor old man. He has no luck. They won't even let him sleep in peace. Sometimes I feel sorry for them. They'll never get me by these techniques, the men. I know, I know. I have tried to point that out to them. Well, for once we agree, the inspector and I. You know, Pepe, in the end, I am the one who will get you. Really? <laughs> I can hardly wait for the day. Eh, and not only you, but the others too. <laughs> Piero, Carlos, <laughs> Grandpère, all of you. That is funny, my friend Slimane. He looks normal, doesn't he, mademoiselle? But he has delusions of grandeur. He thinks he can arrest me. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Sure, sure. 
You know what I like about you, Inspector? I'm humbly waiting for you to tell me. Your face. Hmm? It is a perfect face for your job. To look that false is almost the equivalent of being honest. Oh, I am honored that my appearance pleases you. Don't mention it. Well, I'm afraid I have to go. Business, you know. Good night, mademoiselle. Good night. Good luck, Peppy. It is a shame, isn't it? What? A waste of talent. An unusual intelligence. One hates to see him buried so young. Buried? It is the same thing. What makes you so sure? I have marked the date of his arrest on the wall of my room. High up, where it reads black in the rays of the setting sun. Shall we go? <laughs> Inspector, uh, I sent for Regis here. He has a very clever plan. Oh, Regis has a plan. And what is it, Regis? Well, Inspector, we've all learned that there's only one way to arrest Pepe, and that's to get him out of the Caspar. Oh, that is very intelligent of you, Regis. Shall we send him an engraved invitation? <laughs> oh, Pepe's too clever to fall into a trap, but some of his friends are not so clever. Yeah, get to the point. Well, suppose Pierrot comes down into town, eh? Pepe will be worried by his absence, and he'll come down into town to find him. You have overlooked just one little point. How do you get Pierrot to come down? Ah, that's my plan, magnificent plan. You see, Pierrot has a mother, very old. Now, if she should be sick and send a letter to Pierrot, why, what could he do but leave the Caspar and come down here to town? Mm -hmm. He's a bad boy, Pierrot, but <laughs> a good son. When he comes, we keep the arrest a secret, and soon Pepe comes down to look for him. And when Pepe comes out of the Caspar, we have him. Huh? Are we agreed? Uh, agreed. Uh, but how do we know we can trust you not to make a better bargain with Pepe? What? I'm an informer, not a hypocrite. <laughs> what are you <laughs> laughing at, Inspector? It amuses me to see you sell your friends at bargain prices. You have a flair for business, Regis. <laughs> Morning, Good morning, Pepe. Hello, Betty. Better watch out. Pepe, women will be the death of you yet. Say happy death, Inspector. Good morning. Coming my way? With pleasure. Well, did you get home safely last night? Why not? Nothing unpleasant, eh? Yes, we had one rather unpleasant experience. Yes? With you. <laughs> she didn't think so. What makes you so sure? What did she say? Say, oh, you know, women, they talk about nothing. I hardly listen. Was there anything special about her? Yes. Pearls, the color I like. Handcaps I can appreciate, platinum and diamonds, and she didn't buy that perfume in Algiers. What about the eyes? Huh? Well, they all have eyes, but all that silk and jingle, you don't see much of that in a Casper. But you do where she comes from, eh? She asked quite a few questions about you. Oh, she did? What did you tell her? Oh, what could I tell her? Why, do you think she might be afraid of my past? No, but she might be a little appalled at your future. I told her you might get off with 20 years oh, with a good lawyer. You wouldn't want me to get 20 years. You're too fond of me. What's her name? So, you are thinking about her. Now, how could I be thinking about her when I don't even know her name? Her name is Gabrielle. She's stopping with friends at the Hotel Madeleine. You can see her there any time, Pepe. <laughs> I see. Thank you, Inspector. I'll wait for her to come back to the Casper. Are you dressed yet, Gabby? Andre just phoned. He's waiting on the terrace. Andre phoned. If I'm out of his sight for five minutes, Andre phones. Well, don't you like having him so attentive? I love it. I've just been sitting here thinking that I'm the happiest girl in the world. Well, you should be. Marrying a man who adores you and can give you everything in the world you ever dreamed about. That's my trouble. I'm such a fool. I go dreaming about the wrong things. Oh, that's a terrible mistake. Marie, remember the time in the Bonton bargain basement, the two of us behind the counter? Handkerchiefs, gloves, hosiery? Yes. And don't you forget it. I won't. After all, you don't marry for fun. I didn't. Oh, come on, Gabby. Inspector Slimane is there, too. Inspector Slimane? Well, didn't you tell me you invited him? Oh, of course. I'd forgotten. I'm ready, Marie. Ah, oh, there you are, Gabby. Sit down, dear. Good morning, Andre. 
Good morning, Inspector. I see you've already met my fiancé. I took the liberty of presenting myself. As you see, I could not wait to take advantage of your invitation last night. <laughs> I'm glad. Yes, we're all glad. Inspector, will you tell my fiancé where I was last night during the shooting? You were with me. There. You see, André? I never doubted you, Gabby. And whom did we meet, Inspector? We met Pepe Lamoco. Pepe Lamoco. Nice friends you have. In business, one cannot choose. Inspector... Have you seen him since? Yes, mademoiselle. Uh, did he say anything about me? Well, uh, in a way, yes. Oh, I know. My pearls. A connoisseur can admire pearls without neglecting the wearer. Oh, he means if he stole your pearls, he'd steal you with them. Oh, he sounds marvelous to me. I'd like to meet him. It can easily be arranged. If you wish to visit the Casbah again with a suitable guide... Well, I hardly I... think it oh, necessary. Of course, we'd love to go. Tonight, Inspector, if it's convenient. I am at your service, mademoiselle. Pepe, where are you? Pepe? Hmm? Oh, I've been looking all over for you. What are you doing up here on the roof? Nothing. What are you looking at like that? Oh, looking out across the harbor. What's there, Pepe? What do you see? Home. Oh, you can't see your home from here. Well, there's no harm in trying. Pepe, what are you looking at? Down there in the bay, that ship. Doesn't it make you seasick to look at boats? Doesn't it give you a headache to ask so many questions? No. Have you got a headache? No, no, I'm thinking. Oh, that's sure to give you a headache. Oh, I don't think with my head. I think with my heart. Then you better tell me what you're thinking. It's nothing. If it's nothing, you better tell me. Oh, Ines, I'll get mad if you go on like this. I want you to get mad. Shout at me and hurt me, but don't treat me as if I'm not here. Oh, I know you're here. No, you don't. You're dreaming about something with your eyes wide open. Oh, Pepe, I wish you'd dream about me. Look, you always lived in the Casbah. For you, there is nothing outside. The Casbah's big enough? Not for me. It's like being in a grave. Pepe! I can't stand much more of it. If you want to go away, I'll go with you. Pepe, take me with you. We could be happy together. <sighs> oh. You think I'd look funny in your big city. I'm not good enough for you there. Oh, Ines, it isn't you. It's the Casper. You belong here. You don't understand the way I feel. I've stood it for two years. The time comes when you can't stand it anymore. Morning, noon, and night. Same thing, same people. I'm fed up. I've had enough. You're tired of me. It has nothing to do with you. I just want to get away. Do you know when you're going away? Never. You'll see. You can't do it. I am the Casper. I'll keep you. Just try to get away and you'll find out. <laughs> it's funny for the police to come in and try to arrest you. You're in prison already. You're in the Casbah with a wall around you. Stop there's it. There's nothing else. You'll never have anything else. Stop it, tell and you. I'm glad there's no world outside, not for you ever. Be quiet. Be quiet. Oh, Pepe. Pepe, I love you. I love you. Inspector? I thought perhaps a cafe or two, mademoiselle. Yes, that would be interesting. I'm sorry your fiancé did not care to join us this evening. <laughs> the Casbah is a little too exciting for André. Oh. This is Shani's place, mademoiselle. We can sit right out here. Good evening. Ah, Pepe, will you join us? Oh, with pleasure. Oh, good evening, mademoiselle. Good evening. Oh, I wondered if you'd excuse me a moment. I want to buy some cigarettes. Of course, Inspector. <laughs> I leave you in safe hands, mademoiselle. <laughs> so, you wanted to take another look at the strange, wild animal. Strange, but not so very wild. How do you like my cage? I don't know, yet. Do you like Algiers? I don't like traveling. Makes me homesick. Does it? If I can't see the same old streets when I open my eyes in the morning, I want to go right back to sleep. Uh, so do I, and yet have been in the Casbah for two years. You are homesick too? Uh-huh, very. Pepe! Excuse me. Well, Carlos? Pepe Piero's gone to the town. What for? I don't know. It was something about a letter from his mother. Regis went with him. Regis? Let me know as soon as I get back. Sure. Say. What? That girl you're with is all right, huh? I'll tell her you said so. Take a look at those rocks she's wearing. If it was me, I'd get them first and do the fancy stuff afterwards. Shut up. Get out of here. Okay. Okay. 
I'm sorry, mademoiselle. Was he talking about me? Yes, yes, he was worried about you. Why? Well, all that stuff you have on. Oh, that's very nice of him. You're not worried yourself? No, not while I'm with you. Huh? <laughs> right. Oh, that bracelet is really something. Isn't it? And it hardly weighs anything at all. Here, feel it. Oh, at least uh, 20,000 francs, eh? Add a zero. Oh, but I mean what I would get for it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Here, better put it on again. You put it on, please. Hmm? Huh. All right, there. Want to dance? I'd love to. Your name is Gabrielle, isn't it? Yes, they call me Gabi. Are you married? No. Widow? No. Why not? Who are you with? My fiancé. Oh. What is he like? Jealous. Very jealous. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, at nothing. Too bad. What's too bad? Too bad I don't know you better. Why? Because I would slap your face. See, when people laugh around me, I like to know why. I wasn't laughing at you. I was thinking of André's face, if you could see me now. Dancing with Pepe Lemoco. Come with me. Where? Hmm? Outside, on the terrace. But uh, Inspector Slimane will be looking for me. You said you were in safe hands. Come, come outside. All right. Is that the harbor down there? Yes, the harbor. All the ships that leave Algiers, the ships that go home. Where is your home? Any place in the world except the Casbah. I know what you mean. Any place where there are lights. Yes, lights and music, lovely women laughing. Walking on the boulevard. In the spring. The smell of the first flowers in the city park. Yes, the theaters, the cafes, the subway. Will you ever leave here? No. Will you ever be happy here? Perhaps. It all depends. I'll have to go now. No, not yet. I must. My friends are waiting, but I'll come back. When? Tomorrow. How can I be sure? I never break a promise. Let me go. Why should I? Because I ask you. Say, please. You're rude. Am I? Tomorrow, I'll be expecting you. Mr. DeMille will be back in just a moment to bring us Act Two of Algiers with Charles Boyer and Haiti Lamar. But first... Flight number four, United Airlines, main liner sleeper plane... Leaving for Denver, Omaha, Chicago. Tonight we have as our guest Miss Frances Littaker, one of the lovely young stewardesses who fly with those huge mainliners. Chosen for poise, charm, expert training, these girls have an exciting and glamorous job, and one that's very hard on stockings. So we're especially proud that so many of United Airlines' 194 stewardesses use Lux Flakes for their stockings, both silk and nylon. Over 81% of the girls who have told us what care they give their stockings use Lux Flakes. Miss Littaker, what part of your job would you say was hardest on stockings? Why, I'd say making up the berths in the sleeper planes. We have to kneel right down on the floor to change the seats into lower berths. Hmm, stockings have to be elastic to take strain like that. Other things are hard on them too, Mr. Roy, like serving meals. You mean sandwiches and so on? No, indeed, I mean real hot meals. Things like broiled filet mignon and tomato juice, salad, dessert, and coffee. Well, how can anything that sounds so good be hard on stockings? Well, we keep the hot dishes in a special compartment down near the floor of the plane. So every time we serve one, we have to stoop down. And we serve a million meals a year. Yet you find time for the rest of your job, too? Oh, yes. Actually, we spend most of our time talking with passengers, answering questions. What question are you asked most often, Miss Ledeker? Most people want to know how high we are. Well, I'd like to know, too. 
Our usual flying altitude on United is about a mile and a half to two miles high. I guess that makes your recommendation just about the highest praise Lux Flakes has ever had. Lux deserves high praise, Mr. Roy. I've found, and so have many of my friends, that it cuts down on runs and helps stockings to wear better. Thank you, Miss Lidiger. Everywhere you go, New Quick Lux is the favorite stocking care. Every woman who stoops down to dust the furniture at home or open a filing cabinet at the office knows that stockings have to keep their elasticity if they're to stretch without breaking. New Quick Lux guards that precious elasticity. For better stocking wear and to cut down on stocking runs, wash your stockings after every wearing in gentle New Quick Lux. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act two of Algiers, starring Charles Boyer as Pepe Lamoco and Hedy Lamar as Gabby, with Alan Napier as Inspector Slemain. <laughs> Only a few seconds have passed. On the terrace above the Casbah, Pepe Lamoco and Gabby stand looking deep into each other's eyes. With a quick movement, she tries to tear herself away but his hand grips her arm. Please, I must go. Remember your promise. I will, I told you. Tomorrow. Pepe! What's that? Pepe! Pepe! What do you want? Can't you see I'm with Madame? It's Pierrot. He's come back from the town. He's been shot. What are you saying? They tried to arrest him. He's been shot. Where is he? Take me to him. You. Where is he? Who? Regis. He sent me there. Where is he? Tell us. Help him here. Take him to Aisha's. They got me, Pepe. The police, I, I wouldn't listen to you. Alice, go with Piero. I'm going to find Regis. Let me go, Pepe. Let me go, please. No, no, no. Sit down. You were fond of Piero, weren't you, Regis? Oh, I was. Eh? I, I am fond of him. Where is he now? I tell you, I don't know. No, please, Pepe, let me go. No, you don't want to leave before he gets back. Uh -huh. You want to know why he's been detained, don't you? I don't know anything about Piero, Pepe. You know me. You know I'm all right. Tell me you do. Last night, I was the one who came to warn you. Yes, you were the one. Uh, Pepe, uh, I have Piero here. Piero. Piero! Bring him in. Put your arm around me, Piero. Where is he? No, 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 Piero. I'm your friend. Now, don't shoot me. Carlos, don't shoot me. No, no. hold my arm. No. Steady. No, no, please don't. don't now, please, Piero. No. Piero, no. You sent me no, please, down there. Please, no. And now... No. Now you pay your... No, 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 no. Pew. Pew. He's dead. He's dead. You killed him, Regis. No, 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 don't kill me. Give no. me that don't gun. Don't kill me, no. No, no, no. Well? Well, Inspector? It's finished, Pepe. I did everything for Piero that you would have done yourself. I was all alone at the cemetery. I followed the custom of your people, a handful of earth on the body and flowers to make him feel at home in such a strange place. It is hard not to be able to go down to say goodbye to your friend on his last journey. Piero, Piero is dead. There is no sense to it. I wasn't even there. Oh, Pepe, I know how you feel. You are a prisoner in the Casbah, but a day will come when they will not be able to prevent your leaving. You will go out of the Casbah in spite of them all. I'll get out whenever I wish. And when you go, you will go quietly, the way Piero went, feet first. I am sorry for you, Pepe. Tell me, how is she? She? You know, Gabby. Oh, I, I'm afraid you will not see her again. Her last visit to the Casbah was a little too much for her. She got a bad impression of the Casbah. It's a pity. Pepe, sit down. Please sit down. 
All day long you've walked back and forth, back and forth. Please, Pepe. Sure, come on, Pepe, sit down. Pepe, my son. Well, why are you all staring at me? I'm sick of looking at you. Get out of here, get out. I know what it is. You're thinking of that girl, I know. But she's never coming back. She told me last night, and today I went to the terrace. She wasn't there. She'll never be there. Never coming back, eh? I told you to get those jewels. You had them right in the palm of your hand. Stop it, stop it! Your friends have no tact, my dear Pepe. I know how it pains you to live among this cattle, but let me assure you... They can't I... keep me here. I'm free. Free to go. I'm sick of it. All of you. I'm sick of listening to you. And I'm sick of looking at you. I'll get out when I feel like it. None of you can stop me. Pepe, listen to me. Now, don't go near the town. I don't need your advice. None of you. I'm free to do as I please. Free? Do you hear that? You're walking into a trap. You know better. They can't touch me. I'm going down. Get out of my way. When I please, I said. And when I please is now. Get out of my way. Pepe, come back. Pepe! Pepe's leaving the car's bar. He's leaving the car's bar. Get out of my way. Pepe Lamarco is going out. Pepe, come back. He's going out. Pepe's going out. Out of my way. Pepe. All of you. I'm going out. Pepe. You hear? I'm going out. Pepe. Pepe, wait. Don't go. She's here, Pepe. I saw her. She's waiting for you. What? You told me she wouldn't come again. I lied to you, Pepe. I lied. Forgive me. Where is she? Pepe, you're so quiet. I'm looking at you. I can't speak when I do that. When you met me tonight, you were so very strange. Did you think I wasn't coming back? I was afraid you weren't. Oh, you're beautiful. That's easy to say, isn't it? But what I'm telling you is different, see? For me, you're more than that. For two years, I've been lost, like walking in my sleep. Suddenly, I wake up, that's you. I don't know what I've been doing all that time, waiting for you without knowing it. Do you know what you are to me? You're all the world outside. You're all those lights and music we were speaking of. With you, I escape. See? <laughs> Do you know what you remind me of? The subway. Close your eyes. Listen. Can you hear it? That's my heart beating. Does it go like a subway train? Oh, much faster. <laughs> You're all silk and you jingle when you walk. And with all that, you make me think of the subway. Isn't that funny? Tell me, what did you do before? Before what? Well, before the jewels. I wanted them. Pepe, it's late. I'll have to go. Suppose you don't come tomorrow. Suppose I don't. Pepe, can't you ever get away from this Caspar? No. I'm caught here. Like a bear in a hole. Dogs barking, hunters all around. No way out of it. Do you like that? Maybe it's lucky for you. I don't like it, and it's not lucky. You're right. If you don't come back, I might do anything. I might go down to your hotel to get you. No, don't. Please don't. Tomorrow, then? Tomorrow. I never break a promise. Commissioner Jean Vier, please. Hello? Is that Commissioner Jean Vier? This is Inspector Slimane. I believe we have a way to bring Pepe Lomoco from the Caspa, Commissioner. Yes, I believe I can guarantee it. <laughs> I always told Pepe that women would be the death of him. Uh, sit down, Inspector. What was it you wanted to see me about? Monsieur, it is about your fiancé. My fiancé? Yeah. My mission is rather a delicate one, but necessary. I merely wish to suggest that your fiancé is a little too fond, shall we say, of the local color of the Casbah. What is all this? The Casbah is hardly the place for a woman alone. She attracts too much attention. We naturally wish to protect her from any embarrassment. Uh, monsieur, she must not return to the Casbah. I understand. 
Will you wait here, please? I'll speak to her. Come in. Sorry to disturb you. Oh, going out? Looks that way. Where are you going? For a walk. But where? To the park. May I ask you to give me a sensible answer? Then ask me a sensible question. Where could I go? I don't know anyone in Algiers. I just walk straight ahead. And where does that take you? I'll know when I get there. No, you won't, because you're not going. Oh, yes, my dear. Your hotel bores me. The head waiter looks like an undertaker. And every time I step into this apartment, it looks more like a funeral parlor. Goodbye, André. Wait. I know where you're going. Do you? You're going to the Casbah. Well. You go there every day. Do I? To meet Pepe Lomoco. Oh. So now you're spying on me. You're going to be my wife, Gabby. <laughs> you don't make it a very pleasant prospect. I won't allow you to behave like this. André, I'm glad you said that. What do you mean? We've got to be honest with each other. Why do you think I'm marrying you? Look at yourself and then look at me. I've never lied to you. You knew I didn't love you when I promised to marry you. And you thought it was all right. Until we are married, André, I'll do as I please. That's fair enough. I forbid you to go. It's a waste of time, André. If you go now, there'll be no use in your coming back. All right. Goodbye, André. Gabby, don't do it. Come back, Gabby. Don't do it, please. No, don't, mademoiselle. Inspector, what did you say? I also ask you not to go to the Caspa. Why not? Your fiancé was only trying to spare you. He did not want to tell you the truth as I told it to him. You see, an attempt was made to capture Pepe Lomoco this afternoon. In a sense, it was successful. You mean he, he's been taken? Pepe Lomoco has been captured? Not alive, mademoiselle. <laughs> Pepe Lomoco was killed. <laughs> In just a moment, you'll hear Act Three of Algiers with Charles Boyer and Hedy Lamar. Now, I want to tell you a real-life story which happened to Mrs. Florence Dewey of Morris, Illinois. About five or six years ago, Mrs. Dewey bought some material for a new dress. It was a washable rayon crepe, a beautiful print with bright-colored sprays on a navy blue background. That was a long time ago. But just recently, we heard from Mrs. Dewey about that same dress. Here's what she said. I followed your advice about using Lux Flakes, and I've never used anything else in laundering this dress. It has been washed over a hundred times, and yet the colors are still bright and fresh. In fact, I can't see any difference between the colors in this dress that I've washed so often and a jacket made from the same material at the same time that I've worn and washed only a few times. I'd like to thank Mrs. Dewey for letting us tell you about that remarkable record, because it is one more proof and a good one of how very gentle new quick Lux Flakes are. How safe for anything safe in water. You see, there's no harmful alkali in new quick Lux. So naturally, your pretty things don't get faded and dull, but stay fresh and new looking longer. Lux takes away every bit of perspiration and soil so fast, it gives such rich suds from just a few flakes, even in hard water. That makes it thrifty. Marvelous purity, Speed, thrift, those are the things that have made New Quick Lux the most popular soap in the whole United States for pretty dresses, for stockings, underthings, and other nice things too. The favorite two to one over any other flakes, chips, or beads. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. The curtain rises on the third act of Algiers. Pepe Lamoco is not dead. That was only a ruse of Inspector Slemane's to keep Gabby away from the Casbah and to bring Pepe out. In vain, Pepe waits for her to appear at their meeting place. At last, he returns to his room, weary and bitter. Hello, Pepe. Anything wrong? What's the matter? This morning you were singing. Why don't you sing now? Why don't you mind your own business? Oh, so that's the way it is. All right, I'll leave you to yourself. Well, I'm going into the town. The town? What for? I'm like you. I'm bored. Anything on your mind? No, just to look things over. When are you going? Now. Will you do me a favor? Sure, what? I want you to deliver a letter for me. I'll write it now. Oh. 
<laughs> okay, I get the idea. Maybe I don't look like Cupid, but I'll manage. Where's she staying? What hotel? Uh, the Madeleine. You want to deliver it in person? Well, maybe I can't get to see her. Uh, look, uh, go to the servant sentence. Uh -huh. Give someone a good tip. And tell them you've got to have an answer. Don't worry, I'll get it. I'll be back in two hours. Hello? Yes, this is Andre Giraud. Oh, yes. What boat is that? The Ville d'Algiers at six this evening? Yes, make the reservations, please. Well, Gabby, are you coming with me? Gabby, I asked you if you're sailing with me. Do you want me to? Yes. You know I want you to. Even after what I told you this morning? Oh, you were excited, Gabby. You didn't know what you were saying. But I did, Andre. I never thought so clearly in all my life. Gabby, I won't pretend you haven't hurt me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. But I still don't understand. This man, this Pepe Lamoco, what could he have meant to you? I could never make you understand that. I don't even understand it myself. I only know that when I was with him, I never wanted to leave. And when I was away from him, I... I didn't live until I saw him again. Gabby. I was going to meet him this morning. He'd hold out his hand to me and smile, and we'd climb up to the terrace above the Casbah and look out across the harbor. And I'd be happy with him. That's all I know. I'd be happy with him. Pepe? Here. Is Stella's with you? No, it's lovely, Pepe. He's just come from the town. Pepe, I've got to speak to you. What do you want? Uh, Pepe, the police have taken Carlos. What? They arrested him in the town. How do you know? I was there, Pepe. Yes? How much did you sell him for? Or would I be here if I'd sold him? Go on. What did you have to do with it? I was at the police station when they brought Carlos in. I had a chance to see him in a cell. He gave me a letter, the one you had given him. He told me to take it to the hotel. So you went to the hotel with the letter? I did it for you, Pepe. Well, did you get it? A what? The answer. Oh, she wanted to write to you, but she couldn't. She's being closely watched. But she expects you this morning. You can go down without any risk. Go to the service entrance in the back of the hotel. She'll be watching from her window. Oh. Is that all? Well, she wanted to come up, but she couldn't get away. You're not going down, Pepe. You can't. Shut up. Go on, Larby. Well, that's all, Pepe. She's waiting for you. Well, uh, I'll have to leave. No, now, wait. You said... Gabby couldn't write because she was watched. Yes, Pepe. But uh, in a little while, she'll be able to see me. At the back of the hotel, yes. Oh, that's very funny. Oh, well, he's going to be away. Oh, I see. But why couldn't she write to me? Oh, because, uh, because he was there then. Then how could she talk to you? Uh, well, because... Because you don't know. Pepe! Ah, uh, something else. You think Carlos is dumb enough to give you my letter? But you wrote a letter. <laughs> Do you think me so stupid as to believe he would give it to you? Uh, Pepe, I give you my word. So Gabby could write, but she could talk to you. Yes. Well, <laughs> for a woman who is so closely watched, it's funny the way she can do things. Now I've left enough. You hear me? I'm through laughing. Uh, Pepe, on the head of my... Carlos father. was arrested. That's true. I told you, You Pepe. had my letter. That's true. But I told after you... After that, it fits. But after that, nothing fits. Now tell me what happened. Pepe. Pepe, let me go. Tell me what happened. Shall I break your neck to refresh your memory? No, Pepe. Tell me, you hear? Tell me the truth. I'll tell, I'll tell you, Pepe. I'll tell you everything. All right. Well? Slimane planned it all. Slimane? Then she never got my letter. No. He told me to come to you. Go on. He thinks he'll come down. And then? Well, the hotel is surrounded. They're waiting for you. Did you see the girl? No. Why didn't she come up here? He told her you'd been killed. What? Well, that's what she thinks. She thinks you're dead. Oh, I see. She's leaving tonight on the Ville d'Algiers. But Slimane planned the whole thing. Is that all? Yes. So, they're expecting me, are they? Well, they won't be disappointed. You can't do it, Pepe. You can't leave me. I won't let you. You'll be killed. I won't be killed. If I am, blame it on the Casper. It's for her you're throwing away your life. Pepe, come back. Pepe! He's going. Pepe.
Belomoko. He's leaving the Casbah. He's going out. Out of the Casbah. Going to the town. He'll get him sure. Going out. Leaving the Casbah. Pepe Lamoco. He's going out. He's going out. Pepe Lamoco. Going out. Hello, hello, Inspector Zermain calling. Surround the Hotel Madeleine. I've just had word that Pepe Lamoco is leaving the Casbah. Entrance. When he comes, don't let him out of the courtyard. When he... Wait! That girl! Hold that girl! Let me go! Bring her here! Come along now, come along. Let go! I haven't done anything. Well, Ines, we did not expect you. Where's Pepe? He's not coming here. He's gone to the boat. You expect me to believe that? He's going away with her! Oh, so you are the one to betray him. You would kill him before you would let him go free. No. And that's what you've done, as sure as if you'd held a gun in your hand. I couldn't let him go. I couldn't lose him. And I thought I'd figured all the moves, but I miscalculated. Why didn't I think of you? No. Send ten men to the dock area. No, don't. Give him a chance. Let him go, please. Surround the gate of the pier. No, 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 please. Don't, here. don't let, let him go. get on that boat. Gabby, we're almost ready to leave. Gabby, do you hear me? I'll make you forget, dear. I'll make you forget everything. Forget. You still don't understand, Andre. I don't want to forget. Hurry, will you? Give me that ticket. Ah, here you are, sir. Ah, one passage on the Ville d'Agiers. Uh, you can just make it. Thanks. Put up your hands, Pepe. What? You see, Pepe, we meet at the appointed time. Put the handcuffs on him. No, Simen, not here. She may see me. Not here, please. As you wish. I cannot refuse an old friend. Simen, could I... Let me wait here until the boat leaves. It's not too much to ask. I can't get away. All right, Pepe. I know I can trust you. Pepe! Pepe, I did it. You might have got away, but I told them. Oh, Pepe, don't hate me. No, don't cry, Ines. I was crazy because I love you so I love you, Pepe. You only did what your heart told you. So did I. It's leaving, Pepe. Shall we go? No, not yet, please. Look! I see her. She's at the rail. Gabi! Gabi! She can't hear you, my friend. Gabi! 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 He's getting away! Gabi! Don't shoot! He can't get away! Don't shoot! Gabi, come back! Come back! Gabi! Gabi, spit me! Gabi, heal me! Gabi! Gabi! You fools! I told you not to shoot. He was not trying to get away. Oh, Pepe. Look at me, Pepe. Is it bad? Well, your men, they're learning to shoot. Much better. Oh, Pepe. I'm sorry, Pepe. He thought you were going to escape. Eh? Escape? And so, so I have, my friend, Gabby. Gabby. It is over. Pepe Lomoko has left. In a moment, Mr. DeMille returns with our stars for their curtain call. He'll also bring us advanced news of plans for the fall season. Meantime, we of the Lux Radio Theater wish our many friends a very happy summer. We know from what you tell us that Lux Flakes contribute in many ways to happy, warm weather living. Nowadays, the smart woman lives in Luxables all summer long and looks cool and crisp, fresh as a daisy with no trouble at all. For new quick Lux Flakes makes daintiness easy. Just a dip in these fast, gentle suds and everything that's washable comes out delightfully fresh and sweet. Under things, dresses, sports things. Of course, you'll lux them every day or so during hot, sticky weather, and it's a wonderful help to have flakes that are so fast. It's reassuring, too, to know that these gentle flakes are so safe. 
that they keep nice things, nice colors, new looking longer. Wherever you go this summer, or wherever you stay, at home, in the country, at the shore, keep that friendly box of Lux Lakes handy to guard the most important of all charms, daintiness. New Quick Lux comes in the same familiar package, costs you no more. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. It isn't often we can say that one of our stars is taking his first curtain call in the Lux Radio Theater. But tonight, both of our stars are here for the first time. They're back on the stage now. Charles Boyer and Hedy Lamar. Thank you, Sibine. I'm delighted to be here. It was a great pleasure to work with Hedy again. Well, wasn't Algiers your, your first experience with a camera here in Hollywood, Hedy? Yes, Mr. DeMille. And it was a thrilling day for me when I played my first scene with Charles. Ah, she was so beautiful, even the cameraman sighed. <laughs> I can understand his point of view, Charles. I think you're ribbing me. <laughs> ribbing? That's pretty good American, isn't it, Mr. DeMille? Excellent, Hedy, but we mean it. I haven't seen you around the Paramount lot recently, Charles. Have you finished Hold Back the Dawn? Yes, yes, we finished a few days ago, Sibine. So I have a little vacation coming. Perhaps I'd better begin it right now by saying good night and thank you again. Good night, Mr. DeMille, and I've enjoyed it so much. Good night. <laughs> you two have a way with an audience. When the clock on your mantle strikes the hour, the Lux Radio Theater completes its seventh season on the air. Down the long succession of Monday nights, Lux Flakes and Lux Toilet Soap have brought you about 350 different plays. And that means we've cast almost 8,000 parts with the best actors we could find. What counts most is that during those seven years, seven of the most important years in the history of the world, you've made this theater a kind of national meeting place, an all-American theater that has become a symbol of the American way of life. And we are well aware of our responsibility to you in the significant years that are to come. Our first responsibility, of course, is entertainment. And for your entertainment in the first few weeks of our eighth season, starting in September, we plan to bring you stars like Cary Grant, Irene Dunn, Bob Hope, Rosalind Russell, Claudette Colbert, and Barbara Stanwyck in plays that you yourselves will ask for. Meanwhile, we recommend the program the Columbia Broadcasting System will present at this time during our eight weeks holiday. The program is called Forecast and presents leading stars of Hollywood radio, the theater, and the concert stage. As forecast number one, next Monday, you'll hear the Thousand and One Nights with Marlena Dietrich as Scheherazade in a radio production of the Arabian Nights. You've made the Lux products behind this theater, Lux Flakes and Lux Toilet Soap, a national habit. And we know from past experience that you're not going to break that habit during our summer vacation. So we're going to thank you in advance by promising that next year will be the best yet in the history of the Lux Radio Theater. And now, before we say good night, there's another kind of promise we'd like to make. Three days ago, on the 4th of July, the President of the United States asked every one of us to dedicate himself anew to the principles of freedom and justice, which are the foundation of this democracy. And so, in company with all those who pledge their hearts and hands on Independence Day, we now pledge the Lux Radio Theater to do everything in our power to defend and protect this American way of life and to bring that bright day nearer when life, liberty, and happiness can be pursued in peace by all men. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes and Lux Toilet Soap, join me in wishing you a happy summer. And until September 8th, this is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Lady <laughs> Lamar appeared tonight through the courtesy of Metro Golden Mayor. Charles Boyer will soon begin work in the Universal Picture Appointment for Love. Included in tonight's play were B. Benaderet as Inez, Hans Conrad as Regis, Bruce Payne as Grandpere, Frederick Warlock as Jean Vier, Leo Cleary as Andre, Jeff Corey as Larby, Lou Merrill as Carlos, Virginia Gordon as Marie, Paul Dubov as Pierrot, Noreen Gamil as Aisha, and Howard McNear as Max. Our music is directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia 
Contesting system.